how, how we came across it was my partner actually found the building I did. Um, he called me up all excited about this. He said he had found the old Cuban hospital that everybody had been talking about. And it, 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 there was a myth amongst everybody here in, in the local community of that there was a hospital uh, somewhere in, in Ebor. And I, I'll be honest with you, I walked past this building a hundred times and never once even gave it a thought. I, I'm telling you, I've walked past it a hundred times. Now, when you look at the original photos of the building, you'll understand that in the 50s, the city allowed him to really surgically alter the front of the structure to making it look almost so generic that you walk it right past it. It used to have a very Spanish style to it with little wrought iron and balconies and all real fancy. That's when you look, when you go inside, you see all that Cuban tile and the fancy plaster. The front just doesn't look right, does it? It doesn't fit. Right. The back is where you're standing is a 50s add-on. There is nothing to make it look good on the other side. It's a cinder block. The other side, which is original, is brick. But they came and had to chisel off all of the balconies and I don't know how you would go about, even if you could put that back, this part would look from the 50s still. It started out uh, on the ground level as a wholesale grocer called Sanchez and Company, who uh, obviously also were Spanish. I'm uh, having to assume uh, by the front of the building and the structure that they were Spain Spanish uh, people. They leased the upstairs uh, portion or part of it to Dr. Treyes when he came from Cuba to form his clinic, which he called Treyes Clinic. And eventually his clinic grew and grew to the point where he bought the grocers out and purchased the entire building, uh, kept growing to the 50s and then uh, I guess he petitioned the city to build these two wings on in the 50s and completely uh, modernized the hospital for uh, the 50s. Uh, the operating room uh, is, is, is turn of the century though. It doesn't look like he did a lot of seven, eight months ago, uh, none of it is the way you see it. Most of the flooring like this was covered, this terrazzo was covered. You couldn't see these terrazzo floors. Seven, eight months ago, uh, none of it is the way you see it. Most of the flooring like this was covered, this terrazzo was covered. You couldn't see these terrazzo. The lighting didn't work, uh, most of these walls were busted up. I mean, it's just this one room alone. But for sight, it, it was absolutely creepy. The, 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 the building had been closed up and not been used other than a caretaker staying on the property for uh, two years. Um, and before that, it was an ALF where um, from the reports of the next door neighbor, uh, like crazy people, so there was screaming and things going on all hours of the night and during the day. And, and this was not a pleasant place. Um, I think almost immediately, I, 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 I didn't really like, I didn't like this building really right in the very beginning. That's the truth. It took me uh, two to three days from getting back from my vacation to warm up to this building that my partner had purchased while I was on vacation. Serious state of disrepair. Serious state. Um, I, I found crack cocaine uh, baggies upstairs, uh, crack pipes, uh, needles. You know, no, no, it was it, it wasn't pretty. It was not pretty. <laughs> not pretty. Did I, did I mention my partner said that it was a non-refundable deposit he gave while I was on vacation? So really, when I walked into this experience, it was in a very negative 
frame of mind when I walked in. Very negative. MC Film guys, Mark and Kerry, they're the ones. Uh, right away when we came here, because they're um, trying to uh, increase business to uh, Ebor as a whole, and we're right next to them. They came over, they wanted to meet us, um, they wanted to see the property. I let them into the property, um, and right away they started having experiences. Standing with the manager yeah. of the Hampton Inn okay. in the pharmacy, and we're just talking, I don't know, whatever, I don't even know yeah. why she was there. And she said, Fred, someone's pulling on my shirt. And then, then she said it again. And the first time I sort of ignored it. And the second time I had to acknowledge, you know, when someone talks to you. But I tried to fluff it off. And that same day, she had that, uh, an experience where she come running down that stairway, just red as a beat. After that, yeah. you know, this is a pretty big facility when, if you need to look at every little room, it's going to take you a while. Was kind of convincing. Yeah, it was in Spanish. Yeah. So. <laughs> how you could, how you could not. Um, what they didn't play on that, on the reveal part, is as I made them play it over and over and over. No, like uh, five times. There are three distinct stops. Yeah, it's like it's. And it's pretty tight. It's, um, it's like when try try to move that without without loosening that. And it happened. I'd have to really force it. Now, if I loosened it up, just a little bit. Just keep how about I try and give it? There it goes, see, like that. Now, when you move it and you let go, it's pretty stiff. So either somebody or- but that, Hold on, but that's exactly the way it was. Yep. It was like, uh, uh, it's the part that convinced me. Yeah. I saw the, the, the image go like this. You know how it's got to readjust itself? Yeah. yeah. And refocus? Mm -hmm. That's what would happen each time. The camera would stop, refocus, move. Stop, refocus, move. You could tell there was tension and that in order to move it, it had to have something making it move. Yeah, we had one. That was so obvious to me, and that's yeah. more than the voice. Right. More than the voice. Um, and what I had said to the guys from TAPS was, it almost did a 360. Almost, yeah. And where did it end up? The operating room. What do you know about that, man? What was the... I called Ferdy Pachinko at, I don't know what age he must be now. It's got to be in his 90s. He's living in Miami. And, uh... I asked him what was going on uh, at Trey's clinic, and uh, to hear Ferdy tell it, it was a lot of sex. <laughs> that uh, uh, Jorge Trellis was a very horny Cuban man who had a large appetite. Yeah. And uh, in the latter years of his life, as uh, <laughs> I'm sure a lot of men have learned, you can use your business <laughs> to get <laughs> business. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, that's the best way to put it. Was it like, uh, was it voluntary or involuntary? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I guess the walls will talk. Yes. There are many rooms in the hospital. Right. That's all I got to tell you. There are many rooms in this hospital. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you can tell me which one was the sex room. Right. I'm not sure which one, but I'm sure Dr. Trey's had one.